G'day, g'day. Welcome back to War Thunder. Yeah, been a little while since we've had to do a little bit of a review. So today I'm going to give you a preview of the Veal Mirisky 2. A finish, a vehicle which is ranked 2 but running 2.0. It's a part of the summer landing and it's a Swedish aircraft. It's nice to see some of the minor nations getting event vehicles, which is fan bloody fantastic. And yeah, it also happens to be my birthday today. So happy birthday to myself. Also, quick other announcement, we have started a brand new squadron, uh, a Banjo B4NJ0. Essentially, this is our secondary squadron. So if you want to join that and you want to apply, come to my Discord, link is in the description, and you can apply through there and all that good stuff. Anyway, it's got decent enough speed. It's got 12.7s Thomas 4 with 900 rounds of ammunition and a top speed of 535. Now, it's a premium rank 2 Swedish fighter with, a, with, with basically introduced as a part of the reward for the summer landing event. They are nose mounted on top of the cowling on the top there. And let's just have a look at its armor briefly. There is a single 12mm plate and another 10mm plate. Uh, and that's really it. X-ray, it is. Essentially, you have an air-cooled Pratt & Whitney uh, SC3 uh, G radial with a takeoff weight of 3 tons. This thing is not exactly light. Double wing spars uh, and everything that you need to, well, have offensive armament for is in the nose. Uh, other things, modifications. This thing comes with 100 kilogram bombs. And it does get combat flaps, take off flaps, landing flaps. Your standard stock, standard traces, air targets, etc. They are typical of, you know, the 12.7s you rather expect. And there are three different bomb types to choose from. 100 kilogram 1938 times two. Uh, there is two uh, SC 50 times twos, which are 50 kilogram bombs. Other than that, there is no other real, I guess, use to this vehicle. It's a nice collector's edition. Though this thing really is hard to play. It's sort of hard to position it in such a way that it is actually kind of useful. Now, being 2.0, you do get up tiered sometimes, and those matches are definitely where you get your ass handed to you. However, you occasionally fight biplanes, and this my 513 is about to get some. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Just aim a little bit ahead. Okay, get used to the nose mounted guns, and obviously spray and pray. That's what you do with 12.7s. There you go. Come in from your enemies above them. That is probably the best advice. However, most times you won't necessarily get to kind of altitudes you really need. So side climbing is kind of effective, but also not really. Anyway, we're going to pull directly up as the cartoon sound plays. I don't know why they left that in the game files. The meow kind of noises those stem from the War Thunder event uh, that we had for April Fools. Anyway, pulling up into a vertical, we're going to roll back over. We've popped the combat flaps. And really, this aircraft is probably a little too broken uh, for its own good fighting biplanes. However, I have had troubles with I-16s and HE-112s. When you get up to it, Corsairs are going to be a bit of an issue. And I'll show you a clip of me trying to outpace a Corsair. Problem is, you, you just have limited energy. This thing is incredibly fat. The elevators are not exactly too good. The roll rate is okay. The engine power is ah, mediocre at best. As you can see here, I'm trying to get a bead onto this HE-11. But again, that fighter is superior in its handling qualities. Granted, he does have the rest of the team on him, but I should be able to just slot in and take the kill. Uh, again, the teammates running around, more maneuverable aircraft and definitely better aircraft don't necessarily know how I didn't set him on fire here, or necessarily kill him. That's okay. And you can't really pop the combat flops above 300, or else you'll, well, rip your flaps, just as I demonstrated. Trying to get him in here, I just can't quite get a bead. She's a bit heavy. I'm, I'm trying full elevators, I'm trying all sorts of things. Get a couple of sparks there, but nothing hits, because obviously it doesn't. And unfortunately, I end up by getting the kill assist on this 112. Which is a fantastic little aircraft and definitely better than this one. Having said that, it's a nice collector's item, I suppose. And being Finnish, it's pretty neat, I suppose. Now, if you didn't know, one of these is being restored uh, to static. Uh, Aviation Museum Society in Finland and Finnish Air Force Museum and the Finnish Aviation Museum informed in uh, March 2013 that start a project to restore uh, the fighter and basically will be ready in 2019 and exhibited to the 
a Yoja Museum. The project is still ongoing, uh, and they have done about 12,000 man hours on the airframe, and there hasn't been any updates since 2017. Now, what you're seeing here is me trying to outrun an I-16. That's plenty fine. The I-16 can't catch me in the current configuration. However, I'm bleeding speed like a motherfucker. And unfortunately, this I-15 is going to get absolutely railed. See, like that, just like that. I've pulled up in front of an I-16. Now, watch how slow and sluggish this thing is. I've got, I was greedy with the kill. I should have just extended myself out. What did I do? I didn't do that. Trying to avoid as much damage as possible and trying to get as much speed as possible. The I-16 has me in spades here, and unfortunately, you can't do anything when you're this close to an I-16. They'll just tear you to shreds. You can't outmaneuver them, you can't outrun them. And this is where we run into the up-tiers. Corsair. A fantastic aircraft, very maneuverable, very capable. I can only outmaneuver him for so long. Take a little bit of a hit there, passing blow. 109 above me, just double-checking that he isn't coming in for the fray. And we're going to play the spin game. Now, I have no idea where he is. I've just lost him. I could have easily came into the inside of him there and possibly get a bead on. But unfortunately, just look at how heavy this thing is. He's got every advantage here. This is his playground. And this is at medium altitude, around 2,500 meters. You see, I'm trying to get shots off, trying to desperately roll and, and just use all the control surfaces I possibly can. It's just working to no avail, so I'm just trying to stay alive for as long as possible, because energy is critical here. I don't have a lot of it. Oh man, close shot there. But again, the Corsair has more guns than you, more ammunition, has a better engine, turn fights better than you, has a better elevator and better uh, rudder authority. You just can't use the flaps on this thing at all. You sort of end up by doing this dance, going round and round and round, and unfortunately, he has every advantage here. Aside from this, I'm trying to pull on the inside again. Again, I'm making him work for this kill. I am making him work. Oh dear, altitude. Okay, this is going to be a bit of an issue. Because I've run out of altitude, I can't rely on anything else. So there has to be a big mountain in front of me here. Oh, come on, just avoid. And pull up. Pull, pull. Come on. Oh. No bead. Unfortunately, Corsair's still a better aircraft. Let's not get into Spitfires or 109s. You can somewhat deal with 109s effectively. But to summarize, this aircraft is kind of useless, especially in an up tier. In a down tier, it can be useful depending on the scenario. Side climbing is favorable, but again, you get options like this. Fuck this stupid ass little fucking fat piece of Swedish. Christ! It's so just. Fuck this little machine! I've tried rolling, I've tried boom and zooming, I've tried energy fighting, I've tried stall fighting, I've tried climbing off the map, I've tried medium altitude, I've tried low altitude. I cannot get a consistent result with this piece of junk. Fuck what me. Is the this is the... Do not bother with the Swedish thing. Holy fuck, this thing irritates me. So basically don't even bother with any of the aircraft dogs. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> you know what, Jeebus. And thanks, you've now gotten me a position to end the video on. 